Today, we are confronted with the most painful and difficult but necessary task of eulogizing our brother, Glenn Ford, if that's the correct word for it. And when I've listened to those describing Glenn Ford, they were all right on the money and very correct in talking about his brilliance, his ability to bring words to those intellectuals who were trying to explain our position in this world that we exist in. And he was brilliant. He is brilliant. There's no question about that. I hear those talk about his courage. And he was courageous. How do we know that? He took a position that was going in the correct but opposite direction of those so-called politicians, he called them the misleadership class that had the black public right behind them. He went in the opposite direction that took courage. And the most courageous thing I consider the most courageous thing when he went public and dared to oppose that race card that was so successfully played on us in the form of President Obama and spoke out, debated the misleadership class on any platform that they would dare confront him with. And he debated against this, as I say, this terrible race card that was played against us in the form of Obama. How powerful was this race card? How powerful is this race card? And as a person who spoke out against Mr. Obama when he first came on the scene, um, after my speech, our dear sister Betty says, well, Ralph, how long do you think it will be before the so-called black establishment will allow you to speak before them again? Well, to this day, and we know how long ago it was, I have not spoken before the so-called black political establishment. They never forgave me for speaking out against the race card played against us in the form of Mr. Obama. Well, Glenn continued day after day, speech after speech, laying it out there. That is courageous. And I could go on about his other aspects of, I'm reminded of my time limits. Why is it that when I speak, people always remind me of my time? Is it that I say too much or I spend time and don't say enough? But that aside, Glenn had many great attributes. But for me, the most important, the very important, that was touched on by our dear sister, Betty Davis, was his humbleness. When you spoke to him, as Lisa said, she called and he picked up the phone and answered himself and spoke to her. At the time, a nobody from nowhere. And he spoke to her in a polite form, a polite, respectful, respectful form. And when I met Glenn, it was, um, I guess we both have senses of humor. We laughed a lot in his explanation 
and in his description and his analysis of what was happening in the world today, very intellectual and very funny. He knew how to live and laugh. And when he heard about our dear sister, Lynn Stewart, he was instant. Ralph, tell me about Lynn Stewart. I want to do programs on her. When the nation was totally enfold, enfolded in Islamophobia, Lynn, who supported uh, all oppressed people, as she was a white anti-imperialist freedom fighter, as she described herself, which was very difficult to be and to speak of, Glenn Ford took up the challenge to make her human, to make her real, to make her story available to people. So we know of all of these attributes that Glenn Ford had, and I will go back to the one that grabbed me the most. A humble gentleman and a gentle person. And as Betty said, he could cut you to ribbons in a very gentle way. And he was great as a person to be with. And it is a rare thing for any of us to be great to be with. I know I describe the human condition of all of us, each and every one of us, is a pain in the behind. <laughs> but we look to recognize our redeeming qualities. Well, Glenn was all redeeming quality. He was not a pain in the behind. <laughs> and as Ralph Schoenman told us, the problem with the movement is that when we join it, we bring ourselves to the movement with our warts and all of our problems. Well, I have yet to see Glenn Ford's warts. He didn't bring his problems. Glenn Ford came and he brought solutions. He brought his joy. He brought his pleasantness in social settings, in political settings, and all of the settings that are involved with human conduct. And when I think of Glenn Ford, I think of what Sister Betty said, we dare not lose with all the technology that we have today, any of his moments, because he was recorded all over this country, and the world. all over this world, on many venues, and we have much to learn from him. And when I say, I don't know if a eulogy is the correct words for what we are attempting today, I do know the there is a mystery of our transition. Some use religion. Some use science. They say that energy never dies. It just changes form. And I wonder what form, I can't help but wonder what form this energy changes into. And once I remember saying, well, if these people that you say, these Christians are going to heaven, please send me to hell <laughs> because I don't want to be with these so-called Christians. And I say to myself, where do I want to be? Well, I want to be where the Ho Chi Minh's are where the Fidel Castro's are, oh, where the Glenn Ford's are, where the Mao Zedong's are. And 
I look forward to continuing these conversations or just listening in whatever form this energy goes to in the place that these these energies go with these people. And I consider Glenn Ford as a, as a part of the shining stardust. They say ashes to ashes and dust to dust, a part of the stardust of whatever and wherever. And I feel comfortable that I will try to enjoy, try to be equal to those names that I have just presented to be in that unity, in that atmosphere where they are. Glenn Ford Presente. Glenn Ford Presente with love. And thank you for these moments. Obama is the killer application for the other side. He is their secret weapon. Unless and until Obama's pass is revoked in the black community, we could not be able to organize effectively. For Black is Back, breaking the Obama spell is the must-do task for a renewed movement for social justice and for peace. A big part of our job here at the Black is Back Coalition was to dispel the illusion among black people that somehow we had come into power because Barack Obama and Michelle and their children lived down the hill in that big house. Our mission at Black is Back was to focus the black conversation back on the basic fundamentals of black power, the basic fundamentals of self-determination, which is a universal principle. And he's created the Black Agenda Report. And everybody who's not familiar with it should become familiar with Black Agenda Report. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say that uh, uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for this brother and uh, have uh, uh, sort of hijacked uh, the sister's uh, task of introducing him. Uh, I'd like to bring up uh, Brother Glenn Ford. Uh, today I'm not going to talk so much about uh, the history of the police as the history of our struggle to free ourselves from the police. The Black is Back Electoral School is quite different from any presentation that you might see put on by the Democratic Party or the NAACP. They want folks to vote for a candidate who will ultimately be beholden to corporate money and not to the people who voted for them. The Black is Back School does not recommend that black people vote in every election or vote for or against every candidate. And we say emphatically that the vote will never set black people free from this racist capitalist system. But the vote does have its uses if black voters keep their eyes on the prize, and the prize is self-determination. The Black is Back Coalition has promulgated a 19-point national black political agenda for self-determination, which approaches a whole range of issues, including who to vote for and who to vote against, or whether to vote at all. Power to the people. We're going to talk about political prisoners, of which the United States has many, despite the fact that the United States claims it does not and never has imprisoned people for political reasons. Scores of these prisoners are listed by the Jericho movement. They've been incarcerated for many decades, some of them for half a century. Many more have died in prison. And others have been released after enduring years of torture and attempts to break and humiliate them. That includes esteemed members of the Black is Back Coalition, who continue their work in the struggle, as do the brothers and sisters that remain behind bars. They have never left the struggle. <laughs> 